Yo, what's up? I'm Q Harrison Terry, and today we're going to be talking about the future of AI marketing. Now, every day I ask myself, what's the future? And I take detailed notes and store them in a journal. You can view that journal over at everydays.wtf. For those that are future thinkers and just want to figure out what's going on, I recommend checking out everydays.wtf. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of craze in the whole world of generative AI and its impacts on the field of marketing. Everything from global generative AI market assessments, where they're trying to figure out the impact of generative AI on marketing and all the things that go into marketing. And, and that's a very interesting study. You've got people making cases that, you know, AI and marketing kind of need each other. That's gonna be the future. Generative AI can't exist without the great marketing minds. And then you've got people that are raising their hand and they're saying, hey, I'm an AI expert. I can use AI and digital marketing to help scale and save your business. And yeah, I, 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 I don't trust anyone that says that they're an expert after watching a few YouTube videos or becoming you know, a prompt master, but no disrespect. I do want to say as a marketing executive myself, there are tremendous opportunities for AI to be utilized in your marketing department or marketing efforts. And I just want to cover some of the things that I have found pretty practical and useful. Now, what I will say is AI, as it stands, is more so an ideation, rough draft type of thing. I would not take most of the products that AI generates without editing or without human oversight and just ship it directly to my customer. If you do that, you're in for a whirlwind of pain, but hey, you know, your game is not mine. Maybe that's how you roll. So with that being said, we're gonna roll into some of the things that I find interesting in the world of AI marketing. The first one actually comes to us from Bernard over on Medium. He wrote an article that I thought was pretty well done. It was pretty tasteful. It was talking about how this one prompt will 10X your chat GPT results. Now, I wanna just get into the overall thesis of the prompt. I will leave a link to this in my everyday's notes below. All you have to do is click the link below this video and you can go right here and you'll find this prompt in this guide and all this good stuff. But with that, Bernard talks about how he uses AI for copywriting. And you might be like, AI for copywriting? That's something I'd already heard of. That's true. But his sequence and how he's going about it, I thought was actually very, very genius. So I'm gonna run through this really quickly. Again, I'm gonna leave the actual prompt and the link to that article in my everyday's notes. Go ahead and check that out, link below. First off, Bernard sits down with ChatGPT and he tells it exactly what he needs. In this case, he says, I want to write a Facebook ad. Quickly after that, you know, ChatGPT tells Bernard all of the ways that it can help in creating a Facebook ad. Now, I think that what's fascinating about ChatGPT here is it specifies four roles. It says, I can be a marketing specialist. I could be a graphic designer. I could be a copywriter. I could be a social media expert. And Bernard ends up choosing the copywriter. So he actually goes to ChatGPT and says, hey, I need you to assume the role of a copywriter because what I'm looking for is copy. With that, you know, ChatGPT responds to Bernard with several questions similar to any real life copywriter. They're gonna ask you, you know, what is the main objective? You know, what is unique about your product compared to the others? You know, what, do you, what how many characters? What's the character limit do I have? So it asks all these standard questions. Bernard then responds to those questions with very, very minimal uh, information. So he's like saying, hey, I just need to drive sales to an e-commerce store. You got about a 500 word limit. You know, I want my product to promote weight loss, enhancing sleep and reduce bloatingness. And you're like, all right, cool. Like that's what ChatGPT's got. So what does it come back with? Comes back with some pretty decent copy, like for a draft, you know, this stuff is pretty good. I'm not gonna read the copy here, but from a marketer's perspective, I thought that this was uh, very, very, very well done for something that took literally two minutes. So this is a great way to do AI copywriting, get a baseline. Obviously you wanna to talk to an expert copywriter. There's tons out there, but sometimes you might not have those resources available to you. So if you've only got you know a few, few dollars and you, you've gotta figure it all out, this is a great way to start with the copywriter, learn copywriting yourself from a template from ChatGPT. So that's AI copywriting. 
one thing that it does really well is ChatGPT even ask you, hey, do you like my copywriting? Please give me a review and let me know if you need any changes. And guess what? It'll make those changes for you. So you have this conversation that can go back and forth. And if you pay for ChatGPT Plus, guess what? You'll actually have more characters that you can work with and also you'll have improved models. So ChatGPT, as most people know by now, can be used for a lot of things. AI copywriting and marketing is one of those things. Now, the next field that I want to just tap into real quick is you can use AI for branding. Now, again, I would use this more so as a draft, as a rough start, but when you're in that ideation stage and you're responsible for just getting brands out the door, AI might actually be able to help you. Let's take a look at this. So there's this site. This site is called Namify. I'll link to it in the everyday's notes. But as you can see here, I'm going to actually type in Aura Candles. So I, I have this idea where maybe if I sold candles that had Aura's energy in it or chakras, then, you know, maybe that, that, could, that, could be, that could be a hit. And so I don't have a domain yet and I'm looking for one and Namify is like, all right, I can help you kind of find a name and a site. So we look at Aura View. It tells you what domains are available, but then it also gives you concepts for what logos or what the brand colors could be. And this is all just off of me typing in Aura Candles. So I go around, I didn't like that clear Aura. I kind of could see that. Maybe this works. It's kind of a juxtaposition, but you know, I, the brand is kind of cool. Like it's got the candle in the middle. And remember, this is all AI generated. So you're getting this in near real time. But at the same time, what is super fascinating to me about Namify is I don't have to think. I just have to curate. And if you don't like it, guess what? You re-roll the dice and you keep doing it. Now, Namify, again, is great for the first draft. If you're just trying to get a, a feel for what's out there, I would take some of these components, get your domain, get the rough concepts. Then you can go to a designer or you can go to even someone on like a freelancer website like Fiverr or Upwork or any of those platforms and you could then kind of build this out. Now, when it comes to AI content, one of the things that I think is very fascinating is this site called Text Optimizer. Go ahead, check this out. Again, I'll include all these links in my notes. All you have to do is click one link below. But we already talked about how we're gonna create the Aura Candle. So if we're gonna create that, I need some content to rank on Google for it. So I'm gonna go to Text Optimizer and tell it that I wanna answer the question, what is an aura? So I'm gonna type that in, figure that out. And what Text Optimizer is gonna do is it's gonna write optimized text for me to rank on Google. Now this is super important if you're thinking about the search engines and you wanna optimize for SEO and all that good stuff. But Previously, you need to hire an SEO expert. You probably need to have an SEO strategy. Then you'd have to go in and you have to create all the content. A lot of that now can be done with AI, which is scary for uh, search engine optimization specialists because their whole industry is getting uh, shifted. But here is a piece of text that would actually rank. It has a 63% uh, percent score that's fairly optimized that it would rank in Google. All my keywords are right here. And it's pretty on brand from when I when I did the, the research. I was I was actually shocked. I was like, oh wow, like it's definitely keyword stuffed a bit. But if you take this and again you, you use it as a draft and you bring it over to an actual expert, hey, you're a match made in heaven. And and now you don't even actually need the best in the world. You can actually get, you know, a good start with the GPT or any of those components and, and, and guess what? You can actually take that to someone that has some experience and knows how to work from a starting point and you can actually do some real damage with minimal budget. So that's one of the things that I see AI helping for right now in marketing. Obviously this is gonna evolve and the thing that I think is really, really interesting about the future of this stuff is in its current state, everything's in a silo. So your AI copywriter is on ChatGPT. Your AI brand ideator is on Namify. Your SEO specialist that is an AI variant is on Text Optimizer. You have to like go to each one of these places, put in all the prompts, get all the, the keywords kind of situated where you want it to be, and then wait for things to come back to you. And then you've got to take it elsewhere. We're going to get to a point where this stuff is all going to be automated. The whole system, you're literally going to say, I'm going to create a brand that does X, Y, and Z. I need the Facebook ads. I need the SEO plan. I need the first 10 blog articles. And I need uh, a website that is 
free and clear and available to me right now. And you're going to be able to just literally say that and you get all those things back and it'll be very cohesive. And I think that that is what the future of AI and marketing looks like is more streamlined process that isn't siloed and it's connected. And, you know, there's also uh, a dude by the name of Mustafa Suleiman. He's a very, very interesting uh, figure. He's been working on AI for a long time. I have more content about him on everyday.wtf. But he has this theory that the next turning test for AI is not going to be one where we're trying to determine if we're talking to a human or a computer. It's actually going to be one where the AI is going to be tasked with creating a business and making a million dollars. Because in order for it to actually be, you know, a, a, an actual automated sentient AI to some extent, it's going to have to be able to streamline all these things together and figure it out with minimal human input. And it's a, it sounds like a trivial task, but it's not going to be. And, and that's going to lead me to another interesting thought on the future, which I'm going to store in a diff different note, but that's going to be tied to, you know, what does the world look like when we have you know, robots effectively working in place of people. Like, will we get paid, all that good stuff? As you know, every day I ask myself, what's the future? I'm gonna ask myself that in the coming day. But for those that wanna see some of my other questions and thoughts and just notes that I have taken about the future, you can go to everydays.wtf. If you're wondering why I do this, it's because there's a need for future thinkers like myself and others. And we need to store our thoughts and our findings. I do that at everydays.wtf because the future is something that needs to be understood, not predicted. So with that being said, I will catch you in the future. And until next time.